Hey, welcome to Saber Social Club. I'm Jeremy, and today I have the entire Springbank core range from the 10 to the 25. I'm gonna let you know which one I like the best and which one I think is the best value. When I nose them, taste them, and give them a mark. All right, one unique thing about Springbank is they have this two and a half times distillate process where they distill half their spirit three times, half of it twice, mesh that together for two and a half times. Peated whiskey, not the stereotypical peat that you would get on Isla or from Orkney, maybe it's somewhere in between, but a lot of unique flavors coming out of these whiskeys. For the purposes of this review, I'm gonna go through them quickly. I'll just list all my tasty notes, maybe add a couple here and there, score it and move on. I'll start with the 10. All right, Springbank 10 year old, 46% ABV. This is the 2019 bottling, uh, 100 Canadian dollars I paid for this at the LCBO on the nose. Yeah, just like a really nice freshness to this. Um, Kind of like a sugary sweetness to it as well. You know, like the rock candy, the crystallized rock candy on a stick. I get that in here, really, really nice note. The pear note on here, underripe pear, really, really nice as well. And like the maltiness. I love a whiskey that has a good malt note. Let's go palate. Again, those fruit notes coming through on the palate, star fruit note, really, really nice. Nice and sweet. Again, those like sweet kind of vanillas are coming in. Really, really nice. The finish, you get this heathered kind of style of peat. Kind of like a Highland Park, you cranked the peat level on a Highland Park up a bit. Kind of reminds me of what you're getting in here. Really love this whiskey. Um, kind of different from previous releases. One thing about Springbank, they seem to kind of change their maturation from year to year, release to release. Definitely some really good ex-bourbon influence in this. Um, maybe a little bit of sherry as well. I feel like from year to year, they kind of change the ratio of what they're putting in these bottles. And I'll explain a little bit more on that as we go through. They kind of change it up year to year. But this 2019 expression, really, really good. Um, first time I tried it, I went out and I bought a couple of extras just to have in the bunker because this much improved on the previous release, in my opinion. Score-wise for me on this one, I'm going 88 out of 100. I paid 100 Canadian dollars for this. That's more of the high end, I'd say. You can find this one in the States, probably around 55 to 65 US dollars. Um, I think that price is justified at 100 Canadian, so I'm gonna leave value at zero, 88 out of 100 on this one. Let's go on to the 12 year old. All right, Springbank 12 year old. The 12 year old is the cast strength version. This one is coming in at 56.5% ABV. It's the 2017 release. So this one, 70% sherry cast influence, 30% ex-bourbon, um, 135 Canadian dollars out of Alberta, awesome, great price. Uh, let's see how it is on the nose. Yeah, so this one is more of a beast. It kind of comes at you a little more heavy, lots of complex flavors in this. Um, again, that maltiness, the candy strawberry note in here, I love. And then you're getting that like funky kind of peat element. For this one, I kind of describe it as like a mineral, like a gourmet cheese, like a strong cheese like in like a soil kind of aspect. All that together kind of gives me that peat, that funky style peat in this. Really awesome stuff. Let's go palette. Yeah, lots of complex flavors on this one. Um, maybe one of the most, if not the most, the most complex of the lineup. Um, again, that like sherry kind of cooked pear comes through, saltiness on this one. And yeah, the finish just lasts a decent long time. I mean, Spring Break 12 gets a lot of praise and as it should, really, really nice whiskey. I'm going uh, 88 and a half out of 100 for value. 135 Canadian is a great price for this at cash strength. Bump it up in mark, so that's uh, 89 and a half out of 100 on this one. Let's go to the 15. All right, Springbank 15, again, 46% ABV. The rest of this lineup is 46. Actually, all of this is 46, except for the cast strength at 56 and a half. Um, 140 Canadian dollars for this. It's a 2018 uh, release on the nose. So again, kind of like a more kind of mild aspect as far as the peat level in this. You hardly pick it up at all. What I'm getting here is more kind of like um, a honeycomb sponge toffee aspect to this, which is really, really nice. 
almost kind of like um, a champagne kind of whiny note to it as well. Let's go palette. Kind of like an apricot, honey, um, kind of pear note to this. A little bit of peat too, more of that Heather style. But I think this one's mostly, again, um, a lot of ex-bourbon influence to this. I'm going to say that the balance, maybe it's just a little off for me on this one. I remember trying a previous release of the 15. It was probably a 2014, 13 uh, release of it. I got all just like really nice fresh pear notes. Um, this one kind of more subdued, maybe a little more maltiness to it. Just seems the balance. Maybe just a little bit off um, with me on this one. Decent whiskey, I'm gonna give it uh, 84 and a half out of 100. But for value, I'm paying more money than I did the 12. The 12 is just that much more of a whiskey, so I'm gonna take off a point for value. Bring that down to 83 and a half out of 100. Let's go on to the 18. All right, jumping up in price a little bit here for the 18. This one coming in at 225 Canadian dollars. Uh, not sure of the release year on this one because the stamp on the back is kind of blurred out, kind of rubbed off. Um, you can tell for most spring banks, if you look around the back, turn the bottle around, you can see the laser code uh, stamp on the back to know what year release it is. This one, um, rubbed out, so I'm not sure. I'd say it's probably 2017 or earlier on the nose. So again, nice maltiness. I get the pear note again, some similar notes um, that I found in the 15. But this one maybe like a little more like papaya fruitiness to it. And like I get a tea, like a fruit forward tea. I don't know if you've ever been to like a David's tea. They have a lot of very fruity tea sometimes. I'm the biggest tea fan, but I've smelled a few of them and I get a little bit of that element in here. Yeah, it's nice. Very subtle though. Let's go palette. Really interesting notes and a really, really nice finish on this one. So I get really interesting, like a melted whipped cream and then they get a little banana in there, like a banana split almost. Really interesting notes. Um, more little tropical fruits, a little more papaya coming through. Oh, caramel. I mean, the finish on this one is really nice. I do like it a lot. Again, I think maybe the balance for me is just a little off. Some conflicting notes in here. The maltiness on this one, not really meshing with the other notes as well as I would like. Um, but again, finish on this is really, really good. This one, you got to drink slow. Take your time with this one. Um, it really opens up in the glass. Um, Score-wise for me on this one, I'm going to go 87 and a half out of 100. For value, you're getting more of a whiskey, but you're paying a decent amount more for this one. I'm going to take off half a mark for that. Um, bring it back down to 87 out of 100. Let's go on to the 21. All right, Springbank 21-year-old. This is the 2019 release. It uses 45% port cask, 55% rum cask. Let's see what it is on the nose. Really sweet elements coming out of this, as you may expect, uh, like, like a really nice blueberry pie element to it. And then that Springbank funk is just trickled in there a little bit, um, almost like kind of like dungy kind of style pea to it. Musty, funkiness, uh, it works well with the fruit notes on this one for sure. Yeah, love the nose on this. Let's go palette. So nice. I really like this whiskey a lot. Um, really nice, sweet element to it. Again, um, like a buttercream, kind of like ice cream, uh, chocolate fudge, cotton candy all the good uh, childhood sweets that you could think of in this whiskey. Uh, dangerously, dangerously drinkable. Probably one of the most drinkable whiskeys I've ever had. You put yourself a glass, uh, the next thing you know it's gone, and you're like, what just happened here? Um, yeah, really awesome whiskey, love this stuff a lot. Score-wise for me on this one, 91 and a half out of 100. 
for value, 400 Canadian dollars I paid for this, and that's probably near the low end of what you'll find it for in different markets. Did a bottle split on this one, split uh, with another person, with a good friend, just because the price is so expensive. I really wish this whiskey was less money because it's just uh, too much money in my opinion. Going to take off a half mark for that, bring it down to 91 out of 100, but yeah, what a great whiskey this one is. Let's go to 25. All right, this one is also the 2019 edition. 40% uh, rum casks, 60% sherry casks on the nose. Yeah, really nice, like subtle complexity to this one for sure. Lots of stuff going on. That like freshness, lemongrass, morning dew aspect to it is really, really good. And yeah, almost reminds me a little bit of that like Klein Leash waxiness to it. Tropical fruits. Orchard fruit. Yeah, lots of lots of stuff going on here. I think this is the most, I said that the 12 might have been the most complex. No, 25, definitely the most complex for sure. Let's go palette. Yeah, that's really nice. Again, lots of different things going on here. Chocolate truffle note on this with the tropical fruit works super, super well together. Um, just a tad drying oak on the finish and that spring bank kind of peat element comes through. Yeah, lots of delicate complexity to this one. Really, really good. Um, score rise from this one, I'm going 92 out of 100. It's a phenomenal whiskey. Price, um, did, again, did a bottle split on this one. I think we went three ways or four ways on the bottle split. Uh, we paid 800. Canadian dollars, and again, that's probably on the lower end of the market value. Um, Springbank, with these older releases, uh, very low in the amount of bottles they're bringing out per year. I think this 25 just had 1,200 bottles total for the entire yearly release. Not sure it was on the 21, but I think it was also pretty low as well. So I guess the price kind of reflective uh, with the amount that they're putting out there each year, but awesome whiskey. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take off two marks for that. Bring it down to 90 out of 100. I just wish these, uh, the 21 and 25 were uh, less money just because, man, what good whiskeys they are. But again, so, so, so expensive that um, it's hard to justify buying a bottle for yourself. But you got some friends, split it. Definitely worthwhile trying. Uh, let's talk about this entire range as um, a group and uh, let's recap all the scores. All right, there you have it. There are the scores. Um, the cool thing about this range is that you're getting lots of awesome elements at the younger age David stuff. The more readily available, more affordable stuff, you're getting awesome whiskeys. Definitely love these two. Um, and again, the 2019s. It seems like Springbank this year just hit home runs with these releases. Haven't tried the three in the middle, the 12, the 15, the 18 that came out in 2019, but the 10 year old, exceptional. 21, 25, obviously really, really good this year. Um, and again, like I said before, you know, different elements to Springbank each year, different maturations, you know, they're throwing in rum, they're throwing in port, different ratios of ex-bourbon to sherry year after year. So the score range kind of changes and it's constantly changing every single release. So it's kind of hard to, you know, pinpoint, oh, I really liked, you know, the 15 one year, well, next year it could be, you know, completely different whiskey. Kind of a cool element, I guess. Um, but again, 2019 stuff, man. This 10-year-old. If you want to go out and buy this 10, which I think you should, it's a really good whiskey. Um, pull it out of the box, spin it around, like I said before. Check that date stamp. Make sure this is 2019 because, uh, in my opinion, this is a great, great year for it. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Springbank, in general, what's your favorite that you've had so far from the core range? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like these kind of core range videos, you know, the entire snapshot of a core range in one video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you like it or not. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. More awesome stuff coming up on the channel. You can check out supersocialclub.com if you want to get any merchandise, the glasses, the coins, hats, t-shirts, uh, water droppers I just added recently. So you can check that out as well. Again, thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.